you want to talk about your trip to Egypt? I heard it's going pretty good. You got some bookings. You got some people yeah. lined up and everything. You, uh, it's still not too late, right? From what I understand, people could still. Start uh, it starts April eleventh, and um, the recommendation is to get there by uh, no later than the morning of the eleventh because it starts. We're we're doing a meet and greet dinner on the night of the eleventh of April. So yeah, there's still time to get signed up for it and still time to get flights and everything over there. So if you are a person that likes to live by the seat of your pants, come join us. Spur the moment. <laughs> we're, going to, we're going to have a great time. Uh, we're doing the initiatic path up the Nile River with many stops along the way. And then um, once we're off of the, the cruise up the Nile River, then we're going to be, uh, we're going to, I think have one or two nights at the Red Sea and do some other adventures in there as we make our way back to Cairo, to the pyramids, to the Sphinx, to uh, we're going to have time in the King's Chamber, all kinds of things. So there's It's a 15-day adventure uh, that you can add another two days onto, so it can be up to 17 days. Or if you don't have the uh, vacation time or budget for 15 days. There is a six-day adventure that you can join us after the cruise and um, do the last half with us, at, which includes the pyramid and the Sphinx and I believe the King's Chamber at that point. Um, and then you can also add the two days on. So it could be uh, seven, eight, eight days. So, so all that's on the website and I'll give you the link for that. Um, or go to my website, tracymayhem.com, and go to the Egypt trip, and it'll take you there. So, okay, so there's two two ways to check out the website. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, if you're interested and it's not April 11th yet, there's still time. Still time. Yes, 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 yes. So it sounds like the so is the cruise the second part of the trip, or is the cruise the first the part first of the trip? Part. Yeah. Okay. So we'll be flying into Cairo and staying the first night there and gathering everybody together, having a meet and greet. And then the next day we'll fly um, down to the other end of the Nile River and then take the cruise up the river. And it's a chakra line. Uh, Laura's actually got it all mapped out really, really nice on the website. Uh, the Nile River is actually going through the chakra system, starting at the root chakra and working as well. Oh, that's the cool. Chakra. So we're doing an initiatic path with that, where we're just going to work through all the chakras as we work our way up the Nile River. So <laughs> that's quite cool. We're going to have a good time. Nice. Interesting fact. So the Nile is like our Mississippi, you know what I mean? There, uh, For Mississippi, it goes from north to south. And from for the Nile, it goes south to north the flow of water for the direction. Oh, interesting. So you can confirm that too for me while you're there. Yes, I'll look <laughs> into it. <laughs> but yeah, that's doesn't surprise me. Yeah. This will be my first trip there, so I'm excited. It's uh, I know the energy there is going to be uh, strong. And, you know, I've been trying to get to Egypt for as long as I can remember. Like, that's always been on my bucket list. I even, know, I know. Even Talk before all the, the universe coming shit. around for you. <laughs> yeah, and then it was like, you know, it wasn't on my radar anymore. And pretty soon, tap, tap, tap. Hey, you want to go do Egypt? And mm -hmm. like, oh, Opportunity yeah, knocks. Absolutely. So I'm very excited. You, if you want to see somebody, be very excited. Come with us. It's going to be me. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna be loving this trip and getting to do all those things. Gosh, I forgot to ask you this last time. Are you doing any sessions or anything, channeling sessions? Are you going to be doing any speaking things or any group things, you know, besides the tour? I forgot to ask that last time. Yeah, the idea is that uh, we're going to find find our spaces where we can all focus on light languages and channeling and, and working with everybody. It's a it's a more intimate group. I think we have about 15 of us right now. It, there is room to grow, but um, it makes it nicer because there's more one-on-one -on -one and both Laura and I can work with people in a more intimate setting. If you had personal questions versus like a big, huge group, you wouldn't be able to do that. So I'm excited about that, but we'll be working on that. We're going to do 
uh, past life journey to see what our connection is with Egypt, like what comes in for us when we're in that energy. And so, yeah, we'll be doing is if there's an opportunity for me to do channeling or, uh, you know, bring in some sort of experience for everyone in that way, as far as like meditations or journeys or whatever, I'm going to take advantage of it. So, um, yeah, there'll be, there'll be some stuff going on there. Perfect. Perfect. Now, did you ever explore a past life in Egypt by any chance? I've had, yeah, I've had a couple of past lives that I've seen in Egypt, but the one that, as you're asking at, the one that stands out to me is the one where I was kind of a priestess in, uh, I don't know what you would have called them in Egypt, female, but I worked in the temples with, uh, with like the pharaohs and stuff. And I would work with, um, kind of like an advisor it was a big journey work. It was kind of more like like medicine woman in a way because we would make these um concoctions up for them and they would they would take them and go lay down and then they would go on journeys kind of like an ayahuasca thing oh like i was a, you know i was you, the supervisor for their ayahuasca journey or something and nice. so I was, you was drugging I, people uh, way I'm back in drugging the day them and i'm like <laughs> turn that one to his side i think he's gonna puke no yeah <laughs> so, I think um, that makes yeah. the, the Egypt trip more interesting that you had a past life in Egypt as well, yeah. you know? Yeah, so. I, it's definitely going to be interesting to see how I feel when I get there, if it feels familiar or if I will be exploring and just trying to figure it all out. But Can you imagine one, if you get a flashback and you just get sucked <laughs> in out of reality to, to the remote past? <laughs> I'm like yeah that would be great <laughs> you're like where is everybody <laughs> where'd you guys go i love it when i get weird experiences like that so yeah yep kind of validate I'm... things for me so perfect nice anything else going on anything else about the trip you want to talk about let's see do i have anything else going on i i got other things going on i'll be at the QHHT retreat in Sedona in May, and then I'm going to be at the the Meditation Disclosure Fest in June. And oh, I don't that's cool. Details on that, I'm going to be there, kind of not not speaking, but more. I'm going to be working with Julia Cannon with her Soul Speak and and the stuff that she's doing. So I'll be there at that event. So if people are there, I'd love to see them. So you're going to be in Sedona end of May. The end of May, yeah. Uh, I'll be yes. at the conference con contact in the desert, so I'll yeah, be at that. Sarah's going to be at that too, isn't she? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. That that starts right after the retreat ends. Yeah, it was kind of in conflict for some people. Like, do I go to that and then go straight over? Do I go? Yeah. So yeah, sure. Why you, not? Do it all. Do it all. <laughs> Just tell Dan you need some extra energy. You know, Daniel. Right. I mean, some of that we don't need energy. to go home we don't need to we don't need to pay bills let's just keep playing <laughs> <laughs> so if someone's listening to this or watching this video and if you're going to contact in the desert and you see me just say hello um, when i was at that other conference disclosure fest it was pretty interesting and neat to see some people that watch the show and listen to it and they're like jason i'm like yes and so it was pretty cool so to meet yeah. these individuals yeah. Since Tracy's going to be so busy in the future, yeah. you know, I'm going to have to rely on other people's uh, conversations and stories. <laughs> you know, Egypt's the one that kind of blows my mind because I'll be gone for, I think it's just over three weeks. So that's going to be a big trip. And then I'll be coming back, I'll be home a couple of weeks and then go to the the QHHT retreat. So... I am assuming that you're not doing a, a YouTube video while you're in Egypt, correct? <laughs> not. I, I don't know. It depends. Maybe some hello videos or something. Yeah, get something, you know. We, we talked Put about out there. live, but the time difference kind of is wonky too. So. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. You never know. Laura and I might go live. We might do it, depending on how that looks, because it would our evening, I think, is morning here, so. Well, we definitely want to see lots of pictures and videos or whatever you could provide, yeah. <clears throat> you know, so I'm assuming that would be on your Instagram and 
Instagram is a little trickier for me because I like to upload like 500 pictures at a time, right? So Oh, uh, some more Facebook uh, stuff. more of it would be on Facebook because Instagram wants to change the picture size and like Oh, with, gotcha. with Facebook, I can just put them on Facebook and they can go, hey, look, there's 80 pictures here that Tracy just downloaded. And on Instagram, it's like I can pick I 10 gotcha. and then you got some that are upright and some are this way mm -hmm. and they don't know how to marry the two together. And that I just don't. Sense. So every once in a while, I'll put a couple up. But what I like to do is make like just a little video collage and then that can go on both of them. So if I have time to be creative, I'll just do that. Gotcha. That's and then cool. You have music with it. Well, yeah. we definitely look forward to it. And like Tracy said, mm -hmm. you can check out her website. Her link will be down below in the description. And you're listening to this on the podcast. So just you might have to do a cut and paste on the podcast part. So it's not like YouTube where you can just click on it. So just keep that in mind. But it is tracymahan.com. <clears throat> All right. Cool. I'm going to say Tracy with an I-E because I know the temptation to spell it with a Y is too great. I know. You had to be different. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it because even, even people that are like considered some of my best friends, they'll write me and they put a Y in there. I'm like, how many years have we known each other? <laughs> it's like, huh. Even they do it with a Y. All right. Well, it but, could be worse where a guy sent me a, a message on a message board saying, Hey, Mr. Bailey, spelt it like Bailey's ice cream. Yay. <laughs> and I'm like, How can you get my name wrong <laughs> when it's right there? <laughs> right there. Jason, Jason Ballet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So and, I was and like, You know what? It'll be I have no right problem under, with it. <laughs> it's right under the name. And it's like, it, My name was right there when you wrote that out. It was right Yes, there. yes. Because it, it's like a message board for IT and everything. And I, and I started laughing. I was like, You know what? Uh, it's, it's okay. Bailey's he Irish cream. I can run with it. He was making himself some some coffee with some Bailey's in it. That's what he was doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we got a few questions for Daniel. Mm -hmm. So. We're going to talk about eclipses and uh, a little bit about the future. And yeah, on top on? of that, we're going to see what else we can get out of Daniel. A little surprise question, a little top secret <laughs> question. Throw Tracy a curveball and see what happens. <laughs> That'll get everybody to listen to the end. That's the trick. We want you all to listen to the mm -hmm, end. Mm -hmm. so, I'll yeah. strike when the moment's right. <laughs> <laughs> so. all right well let me go get daniel and then we'll get this party started and see what absolutely happens. all right you guys here we go it is almost tempting to be oh not here sorry Nobody, <laughs> but he's answering the door i'm maybe i could be eating my popcorn again and and playing with the video games or something of that nature but we are here we are here with you in this beautiful collective we are so happy and excited to share with all of you whatever it is that is evolving through the questions today. So we're very excited about it. We're also seeing a lot of the dragon energy who are in the year of the dragon. So we are seeing, as we start talking to you, we are just seeing all of these beautiful energies of the dragons coming out. So if you have not been introduced to your dragon yet, please call your dragon in. You will find that energy is quite close to you. And this is going to be quite a helper for you in this and this year of the dragon, just keep keep using that dragon. Like they say, call on your angels, call on your guides. They can't help you unless you ask. Well, we say call on your dragon. It's got the same rules, right? It, it needs you to call on it in order for it to come in and help you. And let it blaze your path, right? Let it help you move the obstacles out of the way and bring you all the things that you need. Dragons are such a powerful energy. And they are an energy that that is part of your bloodline since uh, spiritual bloodline, if you will, since you have come into the incarnation of being a soul being and part of this extraordinary experience of experiencing. And so call on that dragon. It knows you better than anyone. All right, Jason, what can we do for you? How are you doing? Doing good. Thank you very much, Daniel. Thank mm -hmm. you. I'm glad you didn't leave a, uh, gave us a message like, he is not here at the moment. Please leave a message. So, 
<laughs> Glad you didn't do one of those. But I do have to say, so for the dragon energy, I might be asking my surprise question a little bit earlier than what I thought since you started off with this dragon energy uh, mm -hmm. situation. So I have two questions for you on this one. All right. What is the purpose or what is the reason for the dragon energy? And then I have one more question after that. What is the purpose or what is the reason? Well, the same purpose and reason you would have for any of your spiritual guidance teams. Uh, the dragons come in and they are connected to your soul. They are they are embodying an essence of you and you of them. It brings it brings you into a new vibration, maybe one could say, because many people, there are many of you that actually do work with your dragons, but many of you are learning to work with your dragons and bring in this energy. Uh, they are ones that can be gatekeepers, if you will, to make sure the energy around you is in the highest vibration. And when you are around energy that is of lower frequency, they help to protect you against taking any of that on because you are in paths, if you will. You, you carry the energy that is around you. And as you keep bringing yourself into more and more enlightenment, your, your energy as an empath becomes more and more sensitive. And you start taking on more and more energy that is not yours to be carrying. It is not yours to be feeling, but it gets confusing because you don't know the difference between your own and somebody else's energy at that point. And so with these possibilities uh, around you, as you become more sensitive and evolved, your dragons have been coming in. They've been coming in to act as guardians against this energy. It makes it sound like it is something to be protected against. It is not. It's not good. It's not bad. It just changes the experience, right? And so for a better experience, let your dragon help you to avoid carrying that which is not yours. And it comes in as vision. If you want to see things differently, if you want new perspective, come in with your dragon and, and your dragon will take you to a place where you can get a new perspective, a different way to look at things. And it will help you find resolution. It will help you find the answers you're looking for. It is quite an extraordinary being, and it is quite an intelligent being. It knows where to take you. It knows where you need to go to find your answers. And this is very interesting as we're talking to you about this, Jason. Now we're seeing the unicorns. That is a new one for us, right? I don't think we've talked about unicorns here, but there's there is some very uh, fascinating magic coming into this world as well as you are entering into this this year and carrying forward, there are portals into the magic realm that are opening up and people are going to be able to access more of that, be more aware of other dimensional beings, such as the beings of the fairy realm. And they're going to see things, people are going to be seeing things if they haven't already, that might catch them off guard. It may throw them back into, into hiding, if you will, like you're the spectrum of colors that your eyes can handle, that your physical eyes can handle, it may catch glances, little glimpses of something from another realm. Now, if you have that happen, but then the image goes away quickly, what we want you to do is just close your eyes and see it with your mind's eye and allow yourself to have the experience because your physical eyes cannot always pick up everything, but your mind's eye can. And so as you're opening into the mind's eye and allowing yourself the experience, it's going to get extraordinary. And the more that you can train your mind's eye into these experiences, the more the physical eyes will be able to capture as well, because it's reprogramming the brain. It's reprogramming that visual program, right? And, and giving you a wider perspective of these colors, a way to, to bring them in to your, into your capacity. Is that a word that we want to use? Because the eyes are not necessarily, they are just the vehicle for the light to come in, but the brain is what is, what is dissecting all of that, right? And making sense of it. And so as your brain can be expanded through this process of using the third eye, then your physical eyes will start to respond and the spectrums of light will start to get more vast. Mm. So here we are talking dragons and unicorns. What a way to kick start. This is a good this is a good introduction to the energy. <laughs> Sounds like we hit the ground running. <laughs> we did, yeah. We like that that kind of running into into what 
what was a fantasy world and what could be seeming as a fantasy world for many. Let's make it our reality. Let's bring it in. These loving creatures, they are very loving creatures and they want to help and they want to be here as tools of guidance as they are called upon. So if you feel connected to either of those energies, they're there to work with you and bring in the magic, which we know is real, right? <laughs> yes, the magic is real. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Second question. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to know this. So dragons and dracos, is there a difference between the two? Are they the same? Are they related? Are they separate? Mm. For a dragon, and then when I say the Draco or Draco, like the reptilians that majority of the people talk about. Well, the reptilians or the Dracos would be uh, descendants, if you will, uh, in their own way, just like you have descendants of humanity. Uh, this could be considered an offset or a descendant or uh, a sprouting off of of the dragon DNA. There has been uh, throughout time in history, as dragons have entered into the earth realm, it has also been posed as duality, right? You have the good, you have the bad, just like humanity. You have, you have the light, you have the dark. Uh, this is duality. So of course, there is those experiences to be thought to be considered as well. Is that there is this split of energy. And when, and it doesn't not affect, you know, it affects everything in this world. Uh, it is a world of duality. So when dragons were physically incarnated in this planet in your, in your history, there were, there were dragons that were, it's kind of like when you get a dog. If you get a dog and you love that dog, it's most likely going to turn out to be a very loving animal. But if you get a dog and you abuse the dog and you train the dog to be abusive, then mm. you're probably going to get that. And so when you have these, mm -hmm. these energies here on this planet, of course, you're going to have some that stray into, into that darkness. And then you have some that, that stay in the light or friendly. We don't like to put too many labels on it, right? But there is the two experiences. You have the duality. And the Draco have, they have not originated here on this planet, like the dragons. That is different. They did not, they are not descendants of, of the earth dragons. The Draco have come from their own planetary system, but could also be related or cousins to, you know, how you do that with your own animals and species. It's like, this is, there's so many different kinds of lizards. There's so many different kinds of snakes and all the different things. Well, mm -hmm. this is the same the same concept. And so you have them coming into your world and your experiences and not all Dracos are uh, deemed to be in this negative light that we know that that in Earth you hear Draco and it's a little cringy, right? You get a little cringy because there's stories about these beings and what they have done with humanity. And yet you also have others who are part of this same collective that are just like humankind, right? You have the humans that go out and they cause the trouble. And then you have the other ones who are saying, we don't have anything to do with that. And so you have to kind of put those concepts into place as well. Yes, there is probably a DNA trail there for you that you would be able to pick up on. And it is part of the same uh, family lineage, if you will. Uh, but not all things are following the same story. They don't all have the same path that that the Dracos that you are aware of in this world have, that reputation that they have. That does not, it is not throughout all of the, the galaxy or the universe. There are good in all, all things, right? And so they bring mm -hmm. forward. You also need to remember that the ones that we speak of for humanity, the ones that that come in with that aggressive nature, that manipulating nature, shape-shifting, and all the different things that you have heard about with the Dracos and your human world, they are also playing a role for you in your evolution. So 
it is not always as it seems, as it is. They're playing a part as well. And yes, this is this is important for humanity to move out of this karmic loop, is to break free of this hold. But also, what a powerful evolutionary process to go through to break out of that hold, to break out of that programming, and to reinvent yourself in a different light. And so there's also positive things that come from the experiences with this race. You said that they're helping us. Is that the Draco reptilians that is helping us? Are they helping us? Or I guess you said changing things. Are they helping us in a good way or, or a negative way? What, what do you think? We think everything is for the evolution. So even though it might be deemed a very negative thing or a very toxic thing or a very uh, horrible thing to humanity, what we are hmm. saying is the role that the Dracos are playing, however it is perceived, it is still helping you to evolve. It is still helping you to break free of those old constructs, rather it be the religious holds and the the governmental holds and all the things that as humanity, you've been programmed in these constructs and these, uh, what is what is maybe considered that human slavery of the monetary system that has been set up for humanity mm -hmm. uh, through these experiences, you are growing. Whatever it is that you conceptualize a Draco to be, this is your journey to go into that and look at that and say, okay, if that Draco, if that, if that concept of that Draco is a mirror of something for me to look at. What is it that I can grow and aspire to through that that concept of the mirror, that this this belief system of what this is bringing to me, what is it that I can change about myself to, to move myself out of this concept, out of this belief system, out of this vibration, this frequency, so that I can now have a different, a new experience that feels much better. Did you follow that? Was that? Or... Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. I, I understand. Wonderful. So <laughs> we think they are they are an element of the evolution, because without them, there wouldn't be this push to find something better. Gotcha. Uh, Foo, for thought, that was very interesting. You mentioned dragon energy at my mom's house. I, I was cleaning out her house, and I found a wooden chest with two dragons on the front of it. So I thought that was pretty cool. And then today I had a watch video that was saved to my watch list. And it was talking about the Orion Wars and they were talking about the Dracos and the Reptilians. So, you know, the thought in the back of my mind as I was like, are they considered dragons, separate from dragons, totally different from dragons? So that was always a question on my mind as well. So I figured... Hey, Daniel, since you brought up dragon energy, you opened the door. I'm going to ask you. <laughs> open the door. And of so. course, we see things differently in, in these these wars that you speak of in these, these galactic systems. Yes, there needs to remain balance and consistency throughout the system. And where there is inconsistency and that breakthrough, again, it is creating an experience. It is creating passion within people, right, to start figuring out what is my priority, what what part can I play in this, and what, what part do I want to play in this, and it is, it is so much more than what one can, can put in, in these little bubbles, right, we, <laughs> we just so much information, and we start creating our own belief system around that, but what if this was all happening for you so that you could expand, so you could grow, so you could move beyond this, so that if you decide, I don't like this experience, it feels fearful and it feels it feels um, uncomfortable. And and so you don't like that experience of fear. So, so it gives you the opportunity now to overcome that, to grow through that, and then to evolve beyond that. And then you will never be experiencing that again. And you'll be able to move past that. And then these ideas of fear will no longer enter into your world. And that is what you were calling the 5D or the fifth dimension. Is as you are evolving out of this, then you are moving into that fifth dimension where fear doesn't exist and illness can't find you. And all the things that you are going through in your third dimension 
is is now it feels like you just went through an etherical shower and you got rid of all the things that were fear related right and then you just get to move into something so much better but in the meantime how exciting is that 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 something showed up to show you where you still carry the fear something's there to to show you that that something you hear something you see something you read something that tells you something scary might happen and so that you can look at that and chew on that a little bit and decide where am i at with that am i am i terrified am i afraid am i pondering that this possibility am i going oh that's interesting or am i going huh and then moving on where are you at with that and so it's showing you how your evolutionary process is going so dive into it you you want to look at orion wars and and dracos and what are they doing with this planet and what are the dark tunnels that you can crawl through to find out more of that juicy information? Go do that and, and see where it leaves you. See where it guides you in your heart and in your soul path and what it is you're here to do. There are some people that have came here to be part of the experience of uh, moving this energy, these uh how do we want to say it? The light workers that are coming in that actually came in to be the warriors, to be the protectors, the ones that stand on the front line, the ones that are here to to push that envelope of just a little bit more and a little bit more to expose things. There are light workers here doing that, and that may be your calling, and maybe that and we think, Jason, that's part of your calling as you do these podcasts and these shows and you bring information to light. And you help people to know what's going on in the etherical realms, not just on this planet, but beyond this planet. And you're helping to educate and, and open minds and in such creative ways. And so everybody's here doing what they came here to do and being a part of it in the way that they know how to be a part of it. And so not to worry if you're sitting there worrying about, well, where am I supposed to be? What am I supposed to be doing with this? We say, if you don't know, just go into your heart and send love to all of it and then ask, where do you want me in this? Or what's the best, what's the best place for me? And maybe it's just to sit there and send love to the situation. And maybe it's to get up and, and to go stand and rally for something. Or maybe it's to find the higher frequencies, the, the higher frequency answers to the same question. Because you can be asked a question and you could get two different answers. And it's like, oh, the solar flares, for instance, over the last couple of weeks, you have been experiencing solar flares coming into your earth. And, and uh, one of the things that Tracy experienced over this time was a group of people that were like, oh, did you see the solar flares? Can we hold them off? Can we hold them off? And she was like, why would you want to hold them off? These solar flares are coming in to bring us upgrades and codes and information and change our DNA so that we can evolve with the planet. Why are you trying to hold off the solar flares? So see, there's two different things. Some, this group was fear-based. You know, we need to hold these solar flares back. And the other side was, but what if they're here to serve you and to help you and to evolve you so that you're ready to move into other frequencies and move into different dimensions and realities. So which one would you rather have? Because you're going to have what you believe, what, you know, your energy, where your energy goes, that's where the energy, what is the saying with that? Where your focus goes, the energy goes, something of that nature. Yes, yes. What it is that you are putting your mind to, do you want to be experiencing this solar flares in fear? Or do you want to experience solar flares and joy and bliss that they're coming here to evolve the, the DNA and to bring in new codes for the earth so that we can all upgrade and, and start seeing some of these changes we've been asking for. So we'll take a breath now, Jason, and see if there was anything you wanted to say to that. Mm -hmm. Oh, one, la one other thing I wanted to add. So Daniel, I don't know if you was watching my playlist or if you did something to my playlist but i did add this other video uh it's the nine dragons of chinese mythology so i never watched it yet so but it's it on the list like it's on your bucket list you need to get that get the uh -huh. information so i don't know if you it's spun powerful, on it, 
Yes, we're, we're probably messing with your team as well, saying, hey, you need to slip these in there for, for Jason. He needs to learn about the dragons. I'm even more interested to see what this video is all about. Yeah. I just saw it and I just like, oh, that looks cool. And I just say, I was like, well, I'm just going to save it to later and watch it later. So now, now it'll be interesting <clears throat> to see to see another interpretation of the dragons. It'll be wonderful. Mm hmm. I was going to save this special question for last, but since we're talking about all this juicy information, I uh, probably will ask it now, and then we'll ask the other questions later. So, if possible, is there anything from our ancient past, our ancient history that we don't know or that we should know or like something that we just have totally wrong? Is there anything you could share on that? Hmm. I know there's probably a lot of stuff you can talk about, but what's something that you could share with us that comes from our ancient past or history that one, we don't know about, or two, we just got it completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> we just got it completely wrong. <laughs> we missed a boat on that one. <laughs> We're just looking to see what, what would... What would they want us to share with you about your, you, you've had the conversations about your history going beyond that, which you have evidence of in your current world, a uh, history that goes into a time when your earth didn't look like it does now, as far as the land masses, it looked much different. And then again, it looked much different it, it's changed many times over the course of its lifetime. And over that course of the lifetime, there's been different life forms, different uh, seeding of humankind in different ways, uh, not just the Atlanteans and the Lemurians and, and the native uh, people in those areas, but it goes back even further, even further, even further. Mm -hmm. uh, we see that there is... There is times, they're telling us even the planet has evolved from uh, the kind of plants and vegetation and and growth that you see on it. It used to look different. There was a time where it looked different. Things uh, maybe in bigger scale, certain things were in bigger scale. Animals and people were in bigger scale. Uh, things changed and evolved. And those worlds lived out their uh, their time frame. They they moved through their evolution, and then it moved into to more things, different things that you see in the water, different kinds of creatures, both water and land animals. Those have evolved and moved, and many different things. Uh, there's things that you will never know that the evidence of those. Uh, life forms on this planet are completely, they're cleared from this world at this point that's been through so many evolutions of of reset, maybe as a word for it, or the resets that the original beings that were here first, even beyond the caveman, Tracy's in her head going, is the caveman, is that what you're talking about? No, beyond that even, there was advanced civilizations here uh, that that had lived here for quite some time. Uh, settlers from other planets had come to your Earth. I've and... heard. What's that? No, I said I've heard that before, so that's interesting. Oh, okay. Yes, they have come and settled on the planet and used it as a as a place of of their living for a while. There was a time where they left. But their buildings and their structures, they were still here, but the people or the beings they had left. And even those structures have been reset so many times through the world, resetting itself, right? The floods, the fires, the things that the earth does when it goes through this, this time frame. And so those buildings have been so long gone that there is no evidence of them anymore. And so these are... These are people who have been among the earth that that your history may never know of other than through sessions like this, or as you said, <laughs> maybe others have picked up the same information. But that mm -hmm. is evidence that will come to you that, that there's been these civilizations. 
we see we see a lot of interaction with actually um other planetary beings coming and going and we see that evolving into your future as well we talked about that before where there will be ambassadors who come and go to these other planets that the human ambassadors but that also there will be the experience of these other beings these other planetary beings coming into your world and there will be it, it will it will just keep expanding and growing but the world had to evolve and the initial ones that came in they were living here for a time it feels like they were living here for a time to set the to get the planet set for what was to come which was the evolution of humankind they were part of the ones that were seeding the planets so they came here and they lived in their pods or their their mm. home structures for a while to to start planning and evolving and what do we want to how do we want to set this forward how do we want to seed the planet with life forms what do we want to put here and it feels like they were here they were here on the planet while they were doing that and they lived here for many many years uh, as they planned and orchestrated and created and and seeded this world with many different species many different plants many different things before evolving the the human form and creating that and planting that many different many different um sky people came together for that and many different versions of humankind obviously were created through that as well so we're just looking to see what else would you like to know what else is there that we could share with you that is coming into our the world the planetary system did go through resets uh going through as you know the rise and fall of these different civilizations the the duality was way too much for the original human species uh there was a lot of primal energies going on in the first the first uh, group that was put here and there was it was just a lot of a lot of evolution not evolution it did not evolve it was not evolving there was a reset that happened when we say reset you know we we speak of like you have your own biblical stories of like Noah's Ark yeah. floods and those types of things so the, these civilizations would be wiped out and then then there would be the seeding of of the new civilizations it's kind of like okay try it again try it again <laughs> and so, round two <laughs> round two round three round four a lot of the civilizations that you do know they were more advanced than than what humankind understands them to be back if you take it back into farthest back history there's things that they find there are artifacts that they find that show evidence of this but they don't speak of it hmm. and and we're not sure why they don't speak of it they they find evidence of higher mm -hmm. uh, what do we want to say you know higher technology or levels of technology transportation different things of that nature and we're not sure why they don't share this technology uh, maybe because it'll change our history our way of living or something yes and in all truth it doesn't matter right it really doesn't matter because you're living in the now and so whatever the history was is what it was and what you are living now and the the knowledge and the experience that you have now is what's going to carry you forward uh you and as you are breaking through those constructs more truth will start to come out these things these pieces of knowledge will start to come out the more the constructs are broken down and and bringing in it will just surface more of the truth there are people out there that know the truth right they're the ones that found the truth and then they were the ones that were silenced and and so there are those out there that know the truth and as things start to more things start to be exposed more things more constructs start to fall apart then the, that frees those who have the truth to come forward with the truth and you'll know when it's the truth because it will resonate it will make more sense and you'll look at that and you'll go oh that makes way more sense than what we would have been told 
and it will feel right. And then there will be those who want to jump on that man wagon and try to tell you something else. So this is where we always, always, always say, use your discernment. Don't just follow somebody with the fluttery eyes that everything they say is true. Mm -hmm. You always want to use di your discernment. Use it with us. Use it with anyone you listen to, any book you read. Use it with your discernment. Does that feel right to me? Does that resonate for me? And you know what we mean, because you have read books where you're like, oh my gosh, I feel like they're talking about me or talking to me personally. And then there's the ones where you read it and you're like, I don't know about this. This sounds weird, but they say so. <laughs> so okay. No, we don't. You'll know. If it resonates, if it doesn't, you need to use your discernment. And that is a powerful tool that everybody is being encouraged to use. Everybody is being put in these positions to find their truth. And we've talked about this before too, Jason. Your truth might be different than Tracy's truth and somebody else's truth. Everybody can have a different truth and it doesn't make it mm -hmm. not true. And it's real for your reality and what you are creating for your joy and your your fifth dimensional outcome you can have whatever truth you want and that is what makes this world amazing is once everybody everybody starts to settle into that idea won't that be an amazing reality when everyone can have their own truth and have that experience around it and it doesn't have to be confrontational it doesn't have to mean that you're wrong and they're right or you're right and they're wrong none of that has to happen they get their truth, they create their reality from it. You get your truth, you create your reality from it. You don't like it, change your truth. That's what we'll say. You start believing for something different and you'll get it. All right, we'll stop talking again and see if there's more questions or if we answered the one you asked. Well, we'll keep moving forward. So you mentioned solar flares a little bit and Tracy was asking about eclipses, like there was something to it. So my question will be, besides the eclipses part, is there any connection between the two with the solar flares and the eclipse? And for mm -hmm. the eclipse part, if you had any information you would like to share. Yes. Okay. So what we are seeing to share with you with the eclipses or eclipse and the solar flares, all of it is what, what you want to think about. We want to share this with you. When Certain days come up like, oh, 11-11, November 11th. That must be a portal because it's 11-11. So if doors are opening. Portal, yeah, doors are opening. And really, it's, it's the same as any other day of the year. But because humanity gets excited about this double-digit number, this 11-11, they start looking at it like a portal they start looking at it like a day of wishes and dreams and putting your intentions out there and what did you do for 11 11 and so all this energy starts building up around this this idea of this number and this day and so therefore they have created the very thing that they are looking for they have created this portal they have created this open door they have created the opportunity because they believed for it right so we want to take that same concept with your eclipse, with your solar flares, with anything going on astrologically. What are you believing for? What is it that is happening in your life? As uh, Tracy says, well, Mercury retrograde is in the shadow is what she understands. And so what do you want to experience during this time? What do you want to experience? So the eclipse. The eclipse is going to, is going to interrupt a flow of energy that comes to this earth in a steady manner, it shadows that out for just a moment. And then it moves and here it comes again. And so this energy, again, it is like a reset in its own way. It's like your your body, your mind, your the the earth itself, the energy, it all shifts in that moment with that pause. And then it starts up again. And it's it is like when you when you pause a movie and you start it up again, any of that. What do you do in the time of that pause? What are you doing in that time? You're getting a refreshment, you're going to the restroom, whatever you might be doing in that pause. But you there's something that you do, that's why you pause. And you're doing this thing 
and then you're ready to play the movie again. Well, this pause that is happening, it's happening for humanity, right? It is, it is this energy that goes around the world and is felt everywhere. And yes, it does, even though it's going to be on the Western Hemisphere or wherever. <laughs> they're saying, oh, but it only happens in this part of the world. But the energy is affected all around the world. It's in the atmosphere and it will go global. And so don't fret if you're not in alignment with that solar eclipse. It's still going to generate an energy and a frequency. It's still going to bring you that pause and that reset. And so... If you were, let's say, to you're you're in a an astrological position right now where you are reinventing a little bit of yourself, mm. and you are taking away and really assessing what is working, what is not working for you, what is it that that you are doing that isn't serving you, and what is it that you would rather be doing, and you have been contemplating and pushing and pulling and and deciding is this person do i still want this person in my life and oh, oh i want this person in my life more and and you're starting to push some things away and pull some things in and you might even feel like you're in a little bit of a pause as you are integrating all this that's going on around you and while you're in the pause you may notice that things will fall away people will fall away things are changing and when you come out of the pause, you're going to find yourself moving in a different direction. All of this is all lining up. The solar flares, the eclipse, the astrology. It's all moving everybody into a new a new frequency, is how mm -hmm. we like to say. And so as you are all moving through that, you're in such a hustle and bustle of the day, right? It's like when you when you have a baby. And every day you see the baby, so you don't really notice how much the baby's growing. And then all of a sudden somebody else comes by and they're like, oh, my gosh, your child, they got so big, right? And we've all done that. Mm -hmm. The baby got big. What happened? And you didn't notice because you saw that every day in this little inter intricate moves into a bigger body. And so it was not a shock to you as it was to someone else. But that's what you're going through right now. You're going through all of these little intricate changes. And somebody that hasn't seen you for a year might be like, whoa, you're so different now than you were last time I saw you. And things may have changed in big ways and you didn't notice because you were doing it little, 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 little. So start paying attention. What did you look like last year this time? How were things going last year this time? Where were you out on your path last year this time? And give yourself mm -hmm. some credit for that growth that you have been doing. Because you've been doing it every day, you don't realize how much you've actually done, how far you have actually come. And right now, in 2024, you are in a huge uh, expansion. You're in that year of the dragon, right? And the dragon is, let's just visualize that dragon is just blowing hot air and, and smoke and fire on that path that you are on. It's clearing everything out of the way so that you have a nice clear path. And so use your dragons, use your dragons to clear the path before you so that you can easily and effortlessly move into that, that place of evolution that you want to be, which means the right books, the right videos, the right workshops, the right uh, speaking engagements. And, and what is it that you're going to, Jason? The uh, contact, contact in, the desert. in the desert and disclosure fest and all these different activities that are out there for you to participate in now. You'll know where to go. You'll know who to watch. You'll know who to listen to. And you're just going to have more and more intuitive thoughts about what direction that's supposed to all take you and how it changes your life. There is some times where you listen to one speaker and everything about your life will change. Have you ever had that happen, Jason? You go listen yeah. to one person and you're just like, I will never be the same. <laughs> I will not see the world the same ever again. And... And that will carry you into more and more and more knowledge and more abilities and gifts to retrieve that knowledge for yourself and more expansion in your own awareness, your own connection with your councils, your starseed brothers and sisters, and whatever activities it is that you came here to do and experience, to be more engaged with the human body, to be more alive and alert and, and enjoy this journey that you are on in this physical being that has the ability to touch, smell, see, hear, taste, 
and experience emotions. How exciting is that? Get into that idea. This is such an exciting place to be, such an exciting experience to have. What are you doing sitting on the bench? Get out there and play, get out there and have fun and start creating. And you're gonna start evolving into that. If you're not already there, if we haven't encouraged it, you'll get there. You'll find the right people that are gonna tell you the right thing and they're gonna help you out. And before we pause again to let Jason speak, we wanna say, if you are in a relationship with somebody that is not where you're at in your path, don't worry. You don't have to change them. Don't take it personally. They don't have to be there with you side by side doing the same things you're doing. This is your journey. This is your personal journey. And then they will have their personal journey. And so it doesn't mean relationships have to go drift apart. Find the things that you do still have in common. Do those together. And as you evolve, remember, this is your personal journey. And it's great if you have a spouse there that's supporting you through it. But if your spouse doesn't really resonate with what you're doing, don't, don't take that as, mm, as rejection of what you are doing. If you love that person, just do what you're doing for you. And when it's their turn and their time, they will go through their experience with it. But if you outgrow that person and this feels like the right thing to do to move away from it, there's that is what you do. We just don't want people to think that they need to leave relationships if their partner is not on the same page. If you love that person and you are you want to stay in that relationship, by all means, you stay in that relationship because your soul journey is yours, not theirs. And so we just want to encourage people to also think about that. Your journey is yours and you will find like-minded people and you will find people to share with. And yes, some of you will grow apart, but that doesn't mean that's everyone's story. Okay. <laughs> All right. So with that, did we answer eclipse and solar flares for you? Oh yeah, I think so. If not, we're going to have to make a part two, you know, <laughs> before we run out of time, because I know I want to you see if you have anything you want to share with the audience, but we did have one last thing if we are able to talk about. And so me and Tracy was talking about this and it, it kind of dealt with like with everything changing and so on, you know, the new energy or the shifting and so on. How does that look for like government situations, uh, hospitals, medical systems, you know, what, what would that world look like in that uh, situation? <clears throat> well, there are there are many changes that are going on. A lot of things that are going on that that people are not aware about. Uh, mm -hmm. But there are changes in. I see a little bit of changes coming in for monetary systems. We just want to see what we're looking at because people are going to go, what are they? What are they, right? So, <laughs> now yeah. you're getting everybody's you guys, interest on. You guys have Tracy in here doing that for you. She's like, what kind of changes do, do we all need to run to the bank and pull our money out? No, that has caused us more problems, right? So what we see what we see with the monetary systems is that you're, you're going to see the ebb and flow of the money, the value of money, right? And so you already have all these different countries and everybody's currency has a different value to your currency and you have to do the exchange rate. If you were to travel out of the country, you would take your currency and trade it in for their currency and it may be worth more, it may be worth less. Uh, you're going to see more of that kind of fluctuation in currency and some of that's going to start creating concern among the people, right? It's like, this currency conversion isn't working. It's not working. The value of money keeps going down and you can't keep paying people more because and raising the prices of everything. It's just everything's getting to this crazy point, right, of, of the increase of everything. Well, we'll pay you more, but then we're going to raise the prices. So really, you're in the same boat. And so this this false sense of security and and moving money the way that they do and that is going to start going through a shift you may not see that coming for hmm, you may see more of that in in the next two to three years 
And then we look at the medical system and it's already, uh, there's already been so much that has happened within the medical system through the COVID years, right? And and so mm. much that took place during that. But there's, there's, there's a lot of people that have seen a lot of things. Mm. And a lot of things, again, remember, there's people out there that have your truth. There's people out there that know things that when it becomes safe for them, they're going to come forward. They're going to speak up. But it has to be a time when it is safe for them. It is not the time now. Because we don't mm. want any harm to come to these people, right? We want to protect them as much as we want to protect all of you. And there is information out there that is not being shared with the public, with the health systems. And so there will be some changes, but it needs to come about in a time when this can be exposed the right way and minimal or no harm to anyone, right? And so don't worry, it's being worked on. Things are being worked on. And if you work in the medical system and you're you're listening to this, you might know what we're talking about. You may have seen things, you may have heard things, and you know for yourself whether that's safe or not to speak about it, right? And <laughs> so so this may resonate for you, but there is there's some things that that need to come to light and that need to happen. Now there's also things with uh the availability of of mental health, physical health. Uh, assistance for people, right? And so people that need medical services are not getting them when they need them. They could be in pain and they might be told, hey, you can, you got to go see a specialist. And they're like, but the specialist can't get me in for another six to eight weeks and the pain is here now. And that is not okay to leave somebody in that suffering for that long. And they just send them home and they, you know, they're not getting the help that they need. And so there's there's got to be a reconstruction, re, reconstruct of the construct mm-hmm. um, or the system, the medical system. There is a lot that, that hmm, we know that rules get put in place because they they serve a purpose, but sometimes there's too many rules, right? Too many rules. And that doesn't leave room for for the doctors, for the caretakers to, to explore other options. That's like, oh, if you have this ailment, it falls into, into this column. And so therefore this is your treatment. And it doesn't give give the doctors the option to seek out as as holistic healers, you know, there's so much more to the issue. If if something's happening in the body, why is it happening in the body? And how do you get to the root of that so that it doesn't happen again and or continue to happen? And it doesn't give a lot of room for that exploration. But you are evolving as a humanity to full health care where it is mental, emotional, physical, and even spiritual health care. And so that is evolving again. You're not going to see it right away, but but the stages of that are happening. There's people in place that have information that when it's the right time, they're going to come forward and those kind of things that need to, to be rectified will be rectified. The things that need to collapse will collapse and a new system will be put in place. And there's other mm. worlds out there that that have systems that will work for this and and information that will help. And so even if you cannot fathom, well, what would that look like? Don't worry. There's There's been planets, many other planets that have gone through this evolution already that they already have the solution. It will be here and available when the time comes for that to all change. Mm. So not to worry about that. Uh, the government is the government, right? We're looking at that mm-hmm. construct and there is already so much that's been exposed and the more we just keep so, seeing masses and masses of of humanity coming into awareness coming into their awakening and understanding that these constructs cannot hold and sustain the way that they are doing it's almost like things have gotten to a place of desperation and they're desperate desperately trying to keep people um, in this fog, and it's no longer working. 
um, everybody's blowing through that fog. And so as we see elections coming up, as we see government systems across the world, uh, more and more, it just, it's just going to keep unraveling. It's like, it's like somebody has already started pulling on that string to the fabric and it's just continually continually being pulled on and that fabric is starting to get smaller and smaller and smaller there won't be much left and so in your minds you can see us unraveling that just see it unraveling and and the things that need to come to light will come to light and the things that need to be corrected will be corrected and the integrity and humanity will be put at the forefront again and things like that will start to mm -hmm. fall into place yes and we do see we do see a bright future but in order to get to the bright future things have to be cleaned up right they the things have to come to light and then and then there's the whole reconstruction and rebuilding of that so that can take a course of time but in the meantime you are still creating your own reality. You are still creating your own joyful place of being and choosing what do I want to experience? Do I want to experience uh, this upgrade or do I want to experience fear a little bit longer? Do I want to experience uh, joy and good health or do I want to experience, you know, a little trepidation still? What is it that I want to experience? And and don't worry, you're not going to miss out on anything. You didn't miss a boat. If you're still experiencing bumps in the road and, and things that feel like black cloud floating over your head, it, don't worry about that. You are still healing. You're doing your healing and your self-awareness and just take it back to the heart. Why? What does this make me feel like when this is going on? And find the healing. Because these things are showing up again, remember, for you. They are your mirror. They're coming to you for a reason. Things are being triggered within you for a reason so that you can look at it. So never blame it on the person that's outside of you, right? Oh, oh my spouse, oh, my parents, oh, my uh, co-workers, oh, my boss. It is never really about <laughs> them. They are all actors in your play, as we have talked about before. And they're they are being used, if you will, to be your trigger. They're, they're saying things and doing things that they don't even know they're saying or doing that are triggering you, right? They're oblivious to that for the most part. And then you're doing the same for them. You're, you're playing a part in their world where they're being triggered in their things as well. So it's important to remember if you are feeling some feelings to go inside and look at why. why what did that mean to me? Why mm. am I going through that experience? Why did that trigger me? When, when Jason said that thing, why why did that trigger me? Because, you know, Jason's just talking. He doesn't realize he said a thing. And he's just sharing something from his heart and from, <laughs> from his knowledge or something that he learned. Why would that trigger me? And so go in and look at that and find where, what, what did that mean to you when you heard it? When you heard Jason say that thing, what did that mean to you? How did that affect you? Where did you first feel that feeling? Start doing your little exploring. You'll find the answers. You will heal that wound. You'll move into something better. You'll let go of your attachments. You'll let go of your uh, expectations. And you start just living. Isn't that mm -hmm. cool? Just to even say that. Letting go of your attachments and expectations of other people. They get to be who they are. They don't have to be who you want them to be. And you start treating yourself the way that you want those people to treat you. And then you that's the healing right there. And then everybody else is going to look really good to you because you're not waiting for them to do something or expecting a reaction from them or feeling that, that need for them to validate you anymore. You're letting go of all of that. And you're just giving yourself what you want from everybody else. That's the golden rule, right? I'm going to give myself the love and attention that I was wanting everyone else to give. And then it'll start to evolve around you. It'll start to grow around you. You'll start to experience it because you're giving it to yourself. And now there's no longer a void there that is calling in everyone to trigger you in that void. And you'll start to experience all the love that you've been waiting for all along. So it starts with you, right? All right. Did we... <laughs> 
Did we answer the questions? We know we go oh, off on tangents and then we... we I think so. Answer. I mean... Wonderful. I mean, shoot, you brought up the money system. That that was pretty interesting. I wasn't even expecting that. So, and mm. then um, for the hospital part, the medical system, that is interesting as well. So that it sounds like it would be interesting, good news. It will be, it'll be interesting, good news and shocking news. And for <laughs> some, it'll be like, I knew it. And for others, it'll be like, uh -huh. How <laughs> oh, so don't be surprised. Don't be shocked. Just go, okay, good. That's over with. Now we can move forward, you know, and, and yeah, yeah. I, I think you're right mm -hmm. uh, with that. So I think you've been under for an hour. Do we have one last thing to share any messages for the collective? That is listening. Let's, let's just go scan the audience real quick and see if there's anything to share. Get get into the personal energies. <laughs> well, first off, it's really fun. We we were scanning the audience, and above there's several of you where above you is hovering a loved one that is crossed over that just wants you to know that they're here, they're okay. And they're living, they're living the good life in in those heaven realms, right? And even the dogs are going to agree. With them. <laughs> so just a moment, as we're scanning that, we're seeing the loved ones that are coming in, and many of them just wanting to let their family members know that they are okay, that everything that they are experiencing on the other side, they're there helping, and they're in their, they've got their own little jobs to do. They're part of because they are part of the system too they're the light workers right you've got your light workers and then you've got the loved ones that have moved on they're they're on the other side helping and and bringing in information and guiding where they can and they're also doing their own things that they returned back to when they went to what, what they would call home and so there's the beautiful energy of all these loved ones that are here waiting uh wanting for uh this beautiful knowledge that they are okay to be shared with everyone all right so let's look and see what else we are seeing we just want to make try to make sense of what we are seeing it looks like some it looks like somebody that is flying on a glider and so we're trying to understand what are you showing us we see somebody flying on a glider <laughs> it's a sunny day there's water in the background and they're up high on the hills and it feels very freeing we're hearing words like not a care in the world so hopefully this makes sense to somebody uh, whatever the glider is we're going to ask is there a general message for this okay they're saying well the general message could be remember when when you are experiencing a lot of life all at once Maybe sometimes just quiet the mind and imagine yourself in a space like this, where you are just gliding above a beautiful place in the planet, not a care in the world, and just let everything else fall away for just a little while. And when you do that, the clarity you are looking for will come. The answers to your prayers will come. The healing will come. But you have to let go of your attachment to it. We're going to go back to that attachment, back to the attachment and the expectation. So when you are praying for something, when you are setting your intentions, you're doing your meditations, you're doing your affirmations, you get in this grind, right? And you're, you're looking for it, looking for it, looking for it. But say what it is you need to say. Say the affirmation that you want to say and then just see yourself freely gliding mm -hmm. and letting, letting it all go. You said it, you prayed it, you put it out there and then release it. And just feel the weight of that drop away and allow yourself to fly. Allow yourself to feel lifted and just let go of it all for just a moment. And don't put your mind on it. Take your, take your mind away from it as much as you can until you need to go back to it. And that gives spirit time to get in there and work with that energy before you get in there and sabotage it, right? It's like, okay, I prayed for for X, Y, Z to happen, and it hasn't happened yet, and it hasn't happened yet, and it hasn't happened yet. It's still not happening. I still feel it still there, still happening. Okay, so 
that's not giving room for anything to get in there and actually work. And so letting it go, just, okay, this thing's happening. Rather, it's it's a physical thing going on in your body or something going on in your, your world around you. Just let it go. Let it drop away. Feel the weight of it leave your body. And all of you that are listening, you can do that right now. You're letting the weight of it leave your body. You can feel that weight leave and just glide and know that you are loved and that you are taken care of. And when you are ready to know more about why you are going through that experience, you will know more. But release it. Let it go. What do they say in in those religious structures, Jesus take the weight wheel, right? Jesus. <laughs> and so let Jesus drive that car for a while while you take a nap in the passenger side and, and just give yourself a break from it. And it really does work. There's a reason they wrote that song, right? There's a reason. Let it go. Breathe. Remind yourself to breathe. A lot of times people forget that element, right? They're doing these short little breaths. Instead of breathing in and just really bringing the oxygen into their body and letting letting their body be oxygenated and their mind be oxygenated and, and expanding that energy. So those are two things. And let's see what else. What else do we have? Anything else for the audience? We're seeing we're seeing all the the different star families coming in and standing with each of you. Your groups are here with you. Your your starseed families, your angels, your guides, this crew that helped you plan the life. You are surrounded. There's too much, too many beings for the space in our mind, right? It's like it just got full. And <laughs> so just know that you are surrounded with love. You do have the support around you. And if you feel like, if I have support around me, then why isn't anything changing? Then you go look at why you just said it the way you did. And then you can just go in the mirror and say it that way. And then look at yourself and go, oh, that's why it's not changing. <laughs> you know, you've got to open up to the change. You've got to do the work. And so if you're complaining that it's not changing, what is it that you can do different? Because it's always going to come right back to you. We're sorry to say that it's always going to come back right to you. What is it that you're doing that you could change that would change the outcome of what you're experiencing? And, you know, sometimes you might not like the answer of what it is that you could change. You might not like that because it's going to take you out of your comfort zone. You want everybody else to change, but you don't want to change. But really, you're the only one that's claiming to be miserable. Then you need to make the change. Mm -hmm. Something you're doing needs to happen. Unless if everyone's miserable, then everyone needs to change what they're doing. But if you're the one that's complaining in the situation, then you're the one that needs to change. So all that being said, with great love with all of you, know that you're capable of these changes. Know that you're capable of creating the life you love. And know that all the, the beautiful things that are happening on the planet right now, that's how we want you to see them. They are beautiful things that are creating the change that needs to happen in the planet to get everybody where they need to be for that transition into their fifth dimension experience. And so what, however you're viewing it, remember that's the mirror to you. If you're seeing it as a disaster, then go back to yourself again and say, why am I seeing it as a disaster? Where's that belief system coming from? What if everything that's happening is actually happening so that everything can change in the way that we want it to change? And start looking at it from a different perspective. Get a different way to, to structure that belief system to support the outcome of desire. You are not victims, right? Nobody is a victim of their life. You are here experiencing. So what are you going to do with that experience? And start, start taking those steps. You are in control. What do you need to change to make it better? All right. We talked enough, Jason. <laughs> How how are you feeling at this point? Good, good. I'm hanging in there. Thank well, you for everything. Thank you for all that information. Absolutely. Thank you for having us again. It is always so much fun to be in the show with you and to have you pick our brain a little bit, right? It is beautiful oh, yeah. to go and explore these, these questions you ask us. So thank you so very much. We'll bring Tracy back to you now, and we look forward to seeing you next time.
Perfect. Thank you very much. So <laughs> welcome back. How are you? How are you feeling? Um, you okay? Good. Yeah, I'll be back <laughs> little, in a minute. A little drowsy. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah. Uh, my eyes are like, they're always a little runny after like teary or whatever happens when I'm in the channels. I'm always like, what? I wonder uh, if it was all that dragon energy. Probably was all the dragon energy. There was a lot of dragons in that very beginning when I closed my eyes. And it's like, all of a sudden, all these dragons are flying around. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, so that was kind of fun to to have the dragons come in it was interesting what did they look like was it green dragons what did they look like different colors what was it it was kind of a mix between like the chinese dragon and like your traditional dragon with the four legs and the wings and the um big crown know. head kind of thing yeah yeah, yeah. So like your um and there was different colors and they were some were flying this way and some were flying that way and there was just so many of them and it was there was a lot yeah. So, oh, that's interesting. I did not know that. <clears throat> I did not know you had a plethora of dragons flying around. <laughs> yeah, it was just like I was just in dragon soup. It's like I guess in my mind it would be like if if I went to the dragon world, they take me to a canyon with a waterfall. And when you look down into the canyon, it's just filled with dragons. Oh. And, and they're all flying around. And then there's like these floating islands that some of them live on the floating islands too. But they have caves in that, that where they take me, where there's that waterfall and that cavern. There's caves along the sides of it and everything. And, and there's dragons in the caves. There's dragons flying around. <laughs> So I kind of felt like I was in that environment where there was just, I was in the dragon realm where they're all flying around and there was a lot of them. Mm. So call nice. dragons. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I was not expecting all that. You know, I was like, I was like, oh, well, this is interesting. <laughs> what a coincidence, right? Yeah. It I led found, you right into the Draco question. That Yeah, I was like, well, it's a perfect opportunity to bring up that question, <laughs> see what Daniel has to say, you know? Like, is are they similar? Are they different? Are they completely separate? You know, no affiliation kind of thing. You know, like, hey, don't get me involved with that. So <laughs> I'm glad I was able to ask that question. Uh, yeah. Maybe next time I'll bring up the unicorn magic next time. So. Yeah, that was interesting. That was too. I'm just sitting there looking at these dragons in my head, and all of a sudden, this unicorn, like the horn first, the unicorn horn came in, and it was like this white, almost like a crystal white uh, horn. And then, you know, then obviously the unicorn was there. So mm. it was like, okay, that was interesting. I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've ever had a unicorn come into a channel. So that's interesting. That's a new one. Before we move on from the dragon energy, was there anything else from that besides them flying around? Um, it just felt like it was it was very loving energy. I do want to say that it's very loving energy, excited energy um, to be because so many people because of the year of the dragon. Yeah, you know, so many people be came into this whole dragon energy by just by being excited. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's here, the dragon. So now they're thinking about the dragons, which is bringing their energy in really strong. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, I think Daniel was looking at my playlist because one of the videos that's on my watch list, the nine dragons of Chinese mythology. I was like, Daniel, are you spying on What'd me again? Do? <laughs> it might be your dragon that did it. You don't know. Could yeah. Either that or maybe has maybe something to do with YouTube with the year of the dragon just saying hey everybody needs to watch this you know what i mean yeah pumping it out there who knows? who knows i did i didn't get one did you guys i think it's just you yeah <laughs> probably somebody put it there <laughs> now, I'm in, now i'm interested to go check it out so yeah so that was very interesting about our lost history so i was going to save that question for last as a surprise kind of thing a secret question but i was like you know what we're already talking about all this good stuff i'm like i might as well throw it in now and then we mm. can circle back with the other questions <clears throat> yeah so hopefully everybody hung in there and watched to the end because 
the the secret question was asked a little soon, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Change your plans, you know. But yeah, that was um that was interesting to look at that because I could see these uh, buildings, or I don't know if they were like. You know, like when we go land on the moon, we have these prefab buildings that they put together to, to you know, in the at least in the movies, sorry. And, you know, they land with these prefab buildings that they assemble and then oh, gotcha. they live in those. It was kind of like that because it, it seemed like they were on stilts, like they their living quarters were up off the ground and they were white um, and they were... They weren't like box houses like what we build now. It was kind of more like it was made out of triangular shapes and maybe some sacred geometry in there. Who knows? But but they had windows and stuff, and they were living in them, and they left them behind because when they when they were talking about leaving or that this group of beings left, um, the buildings seemed to still be there that they put there. Huh. So I don't think they were ships. I think they were just like these prefab buildings that they. Oh, okay. Lived so in. you're talking about the lost history. Um, this was the Daniel's talking about like before Atlantis, before Lemuria, like yeah, like the seeding of the planet kind seated. of thing. Yeah, and the, there was a large collective of groups that came down and lived there for a while while they gotcha. were planning. Oh, okay. They were planning how to seed the planet and where to put everything. It's interesting how you see things, but yet we hear something else. You know what I mean? Like, like Daniel's explaining what what he's saying, but yet, meanwhile, on your side, you're seeing, I'm seeing something and telling yeah, you're seeing them. buildings, people dressed up. You know, yeah. <laughs> are they alien looking? Did they look like humans? Did um, they there was. Like they looked mostly human. If they were other than human, I didn't. I didn't see anything. I had this more when you asked that question, it was more of a feeling that yeah, there was other there was other collectives there that were non-human. Mm. But I didn't see that. That was just a knowing when you asked the question. That was just like, yeah, wait, I didn't see that though. But um it there's that feeling of that there that there was several different kind of like when you talk about or we talk about the inner earth. And, you know, you talk about the Telos group and the Palladians and different things like that. But there's other species, other non-human looking collectives down there as well. And it's kind of like that. It's probably similar to the group that's in the inner earth that was there on the outer earth in the beginning, helping to, or figuring out how to seed the planet. It's yeah. probably similar to what we look at with the inner earth and the collectives that are there. Gotcha. So, okay. That would be comparable, I would think. Interesting. Considering they're here trying to help and monitor and and do things. Yeah. yeah. With them being inner earth, they could probably do more monitoring and not get as much involved and stuff. Yeah. And get all caught up in that earth experiment kind of thing. Right. So yeah. We asked that other question about the changes. Were the solar flares in the eclipse? Anything on that first? No, not really. I think that was, you know, that pause was the answer to that, that it, the solar eclipse is kind of like a a reset, like this mm. pause. I don't know if I could explain that. It was more of a feeling that I was feeling when you would say pause. It's like, it's almost like, if I had to explain it, it'd be like you just did a, like when you clean your computer of cookies or something, you just dump all the cookies, <laughs> just dump all the a data dump. <laughs> it reset your computer is kind of like that. You still have all the information there, but you just dumped all the stuff that, that you didn't need. That's kind of yeah. what it's like. So there's kind of like a, a cleanse or something where you're, you're just able to release all the stuff you don't need. Uh, like a spiritual cleansing or something. Yeah. Gotcha. So that would okay. be kind of the way I'd explain that. And then the solar flares, I just see them coming in with, you know, just codes. It's the way I see it, like the rays of light carry these. Oh, okay. Codes. Like energy codes or something? Yeah. And as we stand outside, we can absorb those codes. 
for those that have sunshine. But even in the past, I know Daniel said, even if you live somewhere where it's raining or cloudy, the light is still filtering through that and you can still get the codes. Yeah. So you don't have to be, it doesn't have to be blue skies and 70 outside. You can get the codes no matter what your weather. Or 90. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. So the other thing that we talked about was the changing uh, the medical system, government, and you brought up money system. So that was very interesting. What did you notice on your side? Anything? It just felt like the balance, you know, like the, like they were talking about the currency exchanges, and different things. And um, like, was it like Bitcoin or something like digital money? No, it was kind of, it would be any money, any money, any form of money, Bitcoin, dollar, whatever. It gets so off balance or it's like, something is off balance and I'm not an economical person. So it's like, I can balance my checkbook and there you have it. <laughs> um, I may or may not have gotten a shaken finger at me when we, when I sat down with the bookkeeper this year for taxes. So we're just saying. Um, so what it felt like is that the balance is, it gets too far off and it just can't work. It can't work like that and they can't fix it. There's something that happens oh. and can't fix it. And so something bigger has to change. So you know how we all got, well, no, I'm not going to say we all got the bailout. The corporations got the bailout. Everyone else lost their homes in 2008. You know, and so that was their way of fixing it is we gave all the money to the banks. Well, then how come the people didn't get to keep their houses? There's something that that feels like it's going to be off balance enough that they can't fix it. And so something else will have to happen to to correct the imbalances. Gotcha. So, Put the system more in balance to where it's more an even playing field or an even playing ground or something like that. Something like that. But the thing that I do want to make very clear to everybody is there was no sense of worry, you know, no sense of we don't need to panic. It's I think it's something that they're yeah. already aware of that that's already in the works of, hey, eventually we have to change this. And it would be like Wizard of Oz. It. There's nothing to see here. People yeah, to see behind of, this curtain. <laughs> they not even realize it happened as they're like, hey, we're going to do this thing. And this is how the money's going to get changed out for you. And da, da, da. And then you'll just be like, okay. Um, right. I just don't feel like we need to fear it. Am I still going to be able to buy groceries like, um, at the end of the day kind of thing? Yeah. Yeah. So I think you're right. I think you're right. I think it would be something like that. Like, hey, we might want to change some things up and let's try it this way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there, it, it felt to me like there is already programs or systems that could be put in place that's going to resolve this. You know, it's not going to be, it's not going to be an issue. There was a show I was watching that was kind of futuristic, right? And they were they were saying, okay, humanity doesn't go off of the dollar system anymore. And somebody was like, well, how do you get everybody to work then? And they said, well, it's kind of more like you're going, you're, you want to work because your status is more about the position that you're holding now. And, mm. um, you know, the things that you do in this world is how you gain your status, not through monetary system. And mm. so there was still encouragement that people wanted to do things because they wanted to, you know, be the captain of a ship or be the the doctor or still do those things for that status. But there was no monetary. Everybody's needs were met. And it kind of feels like something on a smaller scale of that will be put in place. But like, you know, the the resources are there for everybody, whatever gotcha. they need. So, yeah, it just feels like it's coming into something simpler, but also, um, you know, it's going to take a little bit to switch humanity's mindset around how this works. Oh, yes, especially something that's been around for 
a long time. Yeah. You know? I know. We all want that little button where we go to sleep one night and wake up in this whole different system and we're all integrated to it and know how it works and we'll be living the good life. But I think I think we got to go through the steps instead. But yeah, I think you're but right. if we can vote, I want to wake up and already have the download and be ready for it. I don't want to have to go through the steps. No. Oh, come on. Don't you want to see how it all plays out, you know, step by step, you know, know. day by day. Be like, <laughs> out. Look what's happening now. I do Tracy's have to like, say, where's the easy button? Easy button. Yeah, I want the easy button. <laughs> Is it the blue one or the red one? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do have to say that, you know, back in like 2008, I, I had that dream that that the world was going to go through this shift mm. and in the dream it was shown like a bubble that would kept growing and expanding over the planet and as people were moved through that bubble then um awakening happened and i i experienced moving through that bubble in that dream it, i was driving a car and it was coming at me and i had somebody in the passenger seat and i looked up and i said are you ready and she's like okay and we went through the bubble and I actually got to feel what it felt like to have no fear, like have all that disappear. And mm. I was like, whoa, this is amazing. And the other people that I could see, if, if they had gone through the awakening like I did, they were in color. And then the ones that didn't were in black and white. And it was all about going through this awakening and finding our truths and all the things. And Gosh. there was things that I journaled in that, uh, from that dream that, and I can't remember where that journal is, or I would love to share it with you guys and read that dream to you. But I shared it with my mom and there'll be times where we call each other and go, Hey, did you see that this is happening? Or did you notice this? That's just like what was in my dream. So, you know, I want to oh. say, I have actually been able to sit here and say things that I never thought would come true. Like I never thought something like that would come true in the dream and all the things that it was showing me would change and people's truths were going to come out. And some people would be scared by that. And other people were going to be excited by that and all kinds of things. And it's like, these things are happening. People are getting exposed and other people are finding their truth and, and being able to share it. And like, da, 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 like all this stuff is happening that was in the dream. It's exciting to see that that these changes are happening, that these changes. And this was all before I started doing the QHHD, before the channeling and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but it all led me to this stuff. And, you know, hearing people's stories about their changes and everything just kind of keeps re reiterating that this is happening this is happening and so i just want to say i'm seeing things that what what are we on 2024 20, like back in 2008 <laughs> i would have never thought i would see a day that these kind of things were happening the level of awakening that's happened since then is huge you know people are like but there's so many sheeple still out there and it's like oh honey you have no idea we are like <laughs> back back then right right you know, and what you you're trying to say find is... someone to talk this way to and now it's like around the corner you can talk to anybody about this stuff it's right right crazy. you know whether it dealt with like ufos metaphysical stuff past lives bigfoot yeah. like a lot more All people are open to the conversations you know aliens yeah you know so i see exciting. what you're saying yeah i can i, I can see that mm-hmm yeah. So just imagine where we'll be in five years and 10 years and, you know, the stuff that we're looking at today, the kids that are born now won't even know what we're talking about. They'll be like, what do you mean? When did that happen? You know, <laughs> it's just like I was telling Jason, I was watching this thing where this the telephone. Mom, yeah, the mom and the daughter were being quizzed and there was a bunch of questions, but the only one I remember was the telephone. They both had to to mimic what the gal was saying. She says, okay, show me how you would answer the telephone. And the kid went like this, like she had a cell phone and the mom's like this, like she had a dial and landline. And <laughs> I'm like, and there were several questions where, you know, the, her daughter was, you know, and answering the question with modern day stuff. And the mom was still doing the old way kind of thing. And that's what we're going to run into, you know, kids. Yeah. Kids I wouldn't think the now, won't even, answer the phone like this like i wouldn't think 
that. I, I would have done that. Yeah. Like, hello? hello? <laughs> <laughs> so maybe 10 yeah. years from now, we'd be like this, like either, hey, how you yeah. doing? What? Hello? Or, yeah, <laughs> like, you know, you hit the back of your hand, like, hey, you called? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's going to be so much more. I, I can't even... We, I, I, I think as humanity, we probably can't even fathom what it would look like in ten years. Because like what's happened in the last ten, I'll be yeah. watching. I'll be watching. Um, we were talking about programs that are on Netflix and stuff, and I was telling Jason I've been pulling up some older shows, and it's bringing really, it back. <laughs> really weird to watch them because I'm just like, why don't you just call them on your cell phone? And I'm like, oh yeah, they didn't have cell phones when this show was made, and I'm like, oh that's so weird. <laughs> You know, and they're like trying to find a payphone and they're running around, you know, trying to find somebody. It's like, why don't you just call them? Oh, yeah, you can't do that. It's an old show. So go watch an old show. It'll it'll remind you how far we've come. And I mean, my gosh, we got whole computers in our pockets. Even the phones that they had that were flip phones, because I'm like, why don't they take a picture of that? Why don't they just take a picture? Oh, yeah, they didn't have a cell phone to take a picture with. They have an old flip phone or the brick phone. So it is kind of fun. Go back and watch some of the older TV or movies. And it kind of reminds you. It's like, how did we ever survive? <laughs> <laughs> how did we travel? Did you know? we yeah. How did we travel? How did we book airline tickets? We didn't just hit an app and go, yeah, that one looks good. <laughs> we, had to, we had to go see a travel agent and. How did they? Kind of reminds me. Uh, see, my mom loved to travel. She she was a road warrior. She could drive for hours and hours. So wow. I was, you know, clean out her house and stuff like that. And I come across this state farm, a big book atlas. Like it's a yes. big. It looks like a coloring book. It's so big, but it was a big atlas type maps, and it had all these maps and everything. I was like, oh, yeah, that's just how we used to travel back in the day. <laughs> that's how we'd find the road that we needed to turn on. Right. But even like booking a flight, you would have to go to a travel agent, and the travel agent would have to call the airlines and and set you up on a flight that way. Mm -hmm. Now we push a button you know, on our phone, and yes. away we go. Yeah, see, don't you aren't aren't you appreciating all the steps you're taking to see all the journey instead of hitting the easy button? <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe, yeah. <laughs> we'll continue on the ride. <laughs> you guys are my ride or die. Here we go. But yeah, it's like Egypt coming up. That's going to be fun. What's that going to? What's can't wait to hear all the stories about it. So. Yeah, I think I don't know if it was Sarah or someone, but someone told me a story how they maybe it was in Dolores Cannon's book, maybe how they lost time a little bit and oh. they were kind of like taken back to a certain time period. So it, it was interesting. So I wonder if you're going to have anything crazy mm -hmm. going on, anything interesting. I might try to give people their little. <laughs> tinctures their little ayahuasca journeys <laughs> yeah you know trace is gonna come back i was a mommy <laughs> they're taking my organs out <laughs> my goodness you couldn't believe it yeah of all the things i could see i was shown as a mummy <laughs> yeah wouldn't that be fun hmm. um no i think it's gonna be it'll be pretty cool yeah see what that is um it's just going into new, to different places, you know, traveling around has been such a bucket list of mine, no matter where it is. It's like I hadn't traveled much before uh, the last couple of years. And so it's been really interesting to just feel the different energies, you know, even just in the United States where, where we live and going to different, different states and mm -hmm. just experiencing the different energy between Oregon and and Texas or Florida or you know wherever and um and then to leave the country and go to Spain and to Thailand and uh, now to Egypt and just feeling how different the energy is in each of these places has been quite extraordinary so yeah 
I did have a couple of clients that had past lives in Egypt. So Ooh. that was pretty interesting. So, <clears throat> or one brought up Egypt. So uh, I know they talked about that secret tunnel, not tunnel, but tomb or area that's within the pyramid. So they're already talking about that. But she, in her video, she was talking about it before a lot of that stuff became mainstream and popular. Mm. So, and I th think there was a time difference between six months when the video was created, where the scientists were looking into it. It's like, we feel like something's there. There's evidence that something's there. Wow. And it seemed like the, either the radar thing happened later, but then they had that other technology where they're measuring the molecules and then they're like yes there is something there that we oh that yeah you the know stuff that there is a secret tomb now. in there and then she's cool. my client sent me the video of that she's like see this this is what we're talking about so and the other one the other client had a past life and it was very brief she, she just wanted to know if she had one during that time frame and she was kind of like a priestess type servant kind of thing like mm. she was in training and she remembers her walking into this room and it was kind of like a dinner table and they were eating and and she always wanted to know more information about the universe about whatever ancient knowledge and so on and the pharaohs or priests or whoever were talking about the universe and they were talking about things that were going on in the universe and stuff like that, or history of the universe wanted it to. And she's like, as she's serving, she's like, like trying to go slow or not too fast and like take her time so she can hear the conversations of like what they're talking about. And she's like, like, Oh, like, this is very interesting. And she didn't want to leave, but yet she's staying like acting like she's cleaning something so she can hear the conversation. And then they're like, <laughs> Uh, you have to leave. <laughs> Gotta go. <laughs> so. Darn it. <laughs> You're like, man, I wanted to stay. Yeah. So. Wow. Fun facts. I love that. I love those kind of synchronicities too. You see something. I always like it when we have an experience without knowing. You know, it's like seeing something and then I'll go online and I'll look for it. I had an experience the other day in one of the Ascension sessions where um, the, I kept seeing, or Daniel was saying, you have Archangel Ariel hmm. with you, Archangel Ariel's with you. And I had no idea what Archangel Ariel did. So the whole session, we went through his whole session, and he was getting information about you're here to protect the earth, you're here to work with um, Mother Earth and the trees and the water and the air and all these things. This is what you came here to do. You came here to be connected to those things, to bring energy to those things. The whole session was like that. At the end of the session, I go, I got to know what Archangel Ariel does. And I looked it up and it was like, help her with the earth and nature. I was like, <laughs> you can't make that up. But, uh... <laughs> it was like so cool. Um, but I love that stuff where I didn't know. I didn't know what she did. And then he gets this whole bunch of information about working with the earth. And then I go look her up and that's exactly what she works with. And I was like, that was so validating. I don't know if it was for him, but, you know, as a channeler, I want to know my information is coming through accurately too. Oh, yeah, for sure. And, um, you know, to get done with that session and then find out that the very first thing that they were talking about supported everything else that came through was really cool and i had that happen with another one where we were seeing the is it scarab the the beetle yes the egyptian beetle mm -hmm. that was showing up and it was interesting because it was like it was lining itself like it was standing up on its back legs you know and you could and it was facing her and it was almost like they were merging um the energy of that beetle with the person and then went through her whole session and then looked her stuff. I wanted to know what the beetle meant. I looked it up and it was very similar. It was like the, the spiritual meaning of the beetle followed right along with what she was told in that session. And so that's kind of fun when those things happen and I can get that validation that we were on the right track with what nice. she was told. You know, it's like, well, if you wanted some more validation that that was where what your message was today 
that's what the beetle means too. You no, know? uh-huh. so that's kind of fun. But um, yeah, so that's to me that kind of stuff is very validating when you don't know when you're in it what that means, and then you look it up and it's right on track with what was being told. So that's fine. Perfect. Yeah. Exactly. It's like that dragon energy thing. You know, what are the odds? And the unicorn and the just, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. Well, good luck with everything. So I guess the next video will be after your Egypt trip. I'm assuming. Yeah. Okay. So I know I've been busy with my projects as well, but those projects are wrapping up and I know Tracy has the Egypt trip coming up, so either I'll have someone else on temporarily or we'll just have to wait until Tracy comes (laughs) back. We'll make sure that we squeeze in. So hang in there, people. Hang in there. Right. Something fun. You're going to get something fun either way. Whoever you bring on, they always bring great information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No doubt. And I'll be back. I'll be back with what was Egypt like. That's and right. Pictures. We're going to do two videos that day. We're going to do two of them. <laughs> it's going to be a long one, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it's going to be, I'm going to be there a while. So that'll be fun. I have a lot to talk about. So awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Anything else? That's all I everything. For you. Yeah. Anything cool. you want to share? You got anything coming up? No, there? other than contact in the desert, that is about it. So, um, I have a couple more things I'll have to wrap up on my side on on some personal things. But other than that, I should be back in the swing of things with YouTube videos and so on. So reaching out to other collaborators, other practitioners, and seeing if they're interested in talking and sharing their stories. That would be awesome. All right. Well, thank you, Jason. Yeah, not a problem. Thank you. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Put up.